Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go latest releases video. And in this video, we're gonna be checking out the latest 14 releases that we have for our headset. So it's the Oculus Go and the Gear VR. Some of them are available on there as well. I'm gonna go through them all. We have seven free, seven paid, and give you my kind of quick opinion on them, whether they're worth your time, effort, and money. I'll give them a thumbs up if I like them and I think you should buy them, a thumbs down if I think you should avoid them, and a meh, whether you should maybe only pick them up if you're kind of really interested in it or maybe it's on sale. And before we crack on and check them all out, just a quick note to say that I'm a little bit slow on my videos, a bit behind at the moment, mainly because the kids are off school, so it's a bit harder for me to get free time to make these videos. Um, but also it's been so hot, so having a VR headset on has been a nightmare. So I'm trying to catch up. I've got loads of stuff planned, loads of cool videos to do, both for the Go and the Quest. So do stay tuned, do subscribe for more, and let's crack on and check out this week's 14 new releases. First up this week, we have Mobile VR Station, which is a media player. You can play local files, DLNA, FTP, um, and it's got lots of options. It seems that it's a mobile uh, media player that has now been brought over to VR. So the Oculus Go uh, in particular. Uh, you can do the usual stuff by sort of getting hold of any sort of stuff that you've got on your headset. Um, you can click it, you can play it. Uh, so here's a sneak peek at something that's coming up very soon. Uh, but it's a VR 180 video that I've got playing at the moment. You can play other stuff as well. You can change the uh, layout of them. So you've got lots of sort of templates for different types of video projection. So 3D and 360 3D and all that sort of stuff. So we've got ourselves a 180 left and right dome one. Uh, there we go, uh, hide interface. And there we go, so we've got the video, it's in 3D. Uh, what I would say is when you go up to the top here, this very top bar is your kind of scrub bar. It's hard to kind of figure out what you're doing uh, sometimes. It, that wasn't very obvious when I first jumped into it. The controls aren't great, and it's actually only plays the first five minutes in video unless you buy the £3.99 or £4.99 premium edition to an unlock the full thing. So is this better than Pegasus? Pegasus is my personal favorite vi video player, media player on the Oculus Go. Uh, it works great. It's got some great sort of alternative functionality. If you load sort of um, text files to it, you can kind of change its behavior and make it so that it like starts up on a certain video. When you start it up, you take the headset off, put it back on, it restarts a video. That's great for sort of presentations and taking the headset around to show people. This doesn't seem to have that. It's controls are a bit basic looking. They're not very sort of attractive. It's all way up here as well. So why is it not down here? So it's a bit more convenient rather than up here. So it all feels a bit sort of, uh. You've got different user profiles, which is nice, I guess. Uh, and you can reposition your view with different videos. Uh, you can even have it where it duplicates a VR 180 video behind you as well as in front of you. That's kind of cool. Um, if you're kind of making a VR 180, a, three, a 360 video in a way uh, for a presentation or something. But uh, I mean, this all just looks a bit poor. So it doesn't get a recommendation from me. I'm not gonna give it a thumbs down because maybe there's more to come from it. From the sounds of it, it's gonna be worked on, it's gonna be improved on. At the moment, it's gonna get a bit of a meh, but uh, let me know in the comments down below if I missed something. Is it better than Picasus? I like Picasus. I think it's great, it looks great. The environments are great. This is meh. <laughs> Next up is Beat Blaster. So this is £7.99 or $10, 10 euros. Um, and it's like a laser kind of gun beat game. So let's do level, we can do, uh, I think it's like 30 different levels. Uh, I think I've got to level three so far. It doesn't seem like every level, even if you do level three again, is exactly the same. But you kind of control it with your head and you shoot the targets with the gun. So you go through these doors, they automatically open for you. Collect as many sort of bubbles as you can. The doors aren't, ah, oh, the doors aren't of that obvious, I would say, that they're actually doors until you actually sort of run into them. But you shoot these targets, you can't shoot this snake thing. You gotta kind of go around it. So you gotta be careful. As I say the levels, even level three isn't the same each time. I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit because it is a bit loud. Uh, and you just gotta kind of shoot as much as you can uh, before you crash. Like, it's, it's kind of an endless runner, I guess. Um, which isn't what it looks like. It doesn't look like an endless runner when you, uh... Look, what was that? I just ran into a door. 
Why didn't the door open? Or did I not go through the door? Did I hit the wall? I think that's what I'm kind of saying. The doors and the walls sometimes don't look different enough. I'm not sure what happened there. Whether that didn't look... I thought that, I thought that was a door. But let's continue through here. So these big snake things are a bit annoying. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, that was a bit... That was a bit annoying. That big massive door there. Let's try again. Um, see that door there didn't even open. So I don't know whether that's just bugged. And if I'm going to hit another door, it's not going to open on me. Oh, you've got to make sure you're shooting, I think, when you go through the doors, otherwise you're going to get caught. So, Endless Runner, it's expensive. See, that was a door, it didn't open again. So I think it's a bit bugged. Maybe we go back to level two. Uh, it wasn't like that before. Oh, see, that door didn't open there again. I wonder if that's going to be an issue. Maybe I need to reboot the entire game. But for the money, it doesn't seem worth it. I think if it was like half the price, if it was like four quid, maybe five quid, maybe... But for 8 quid, 10 quid, uh, you're getting into kind of the higher realm of Go experiences. And this isn't one of those. You can get some much better sort of experiences for that money. Oh, but he just shot me. That was legit. Um, I don't know. It seems interesting. It seems like it could be quite good fun. The music's quite good. And now, as I was saying that, now the music's now just cut out entirely. I've got no sound coming out of the gun. And I just walked into that wall. So it's going to get a bit of a thumbs down because it seems to be a bit broken. It does say early access on the screen here. But on the store, it doesn't say early access. I don't know what's happening. I'm not sure what the issue is. But it seems a bit broken to me. When I was playing it before, it didn't seem too bad. I got to level 3 without any issues. But then playing it now and playing it before, it has done this a few times. So it's a bit busted. So if it gets fixed, yeah, I think I'll give it a little bit of thumbs up. But I'd, I'd prefer the, if the price was just a little bit cheaper for what it is. Next up, we have Atlas VR, which is an educational app about the Earth and our solar system. So it does, from the sounds of it, meant to have some information about sort of further, further out in our solar system beyond Earth. I don't seem to be able to select anything beyond Earth. Like there's the sun over there. I can't click on it. But we have the Earth here. We have a panel we can click on. It's clearly for educational purposes for kids and students and that sort of thing. You can click on the Earth. You can get sort of different information. You can kind of move around. It is kind of gaze controls to click on, but you do use your controller to actually click. So you sort of move with your head, but click and grab with your controller. Uh, you can learn. So you click on learn, and there's like different hotspots about different parts of the planet to learn about. Uh, you can click on the different things about the Earth's core. The different sort of levels of the earth, the, the mantle, the inner core, the outer core, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, the day and night cycle, about the ozone. Uh, what else have we got? Click on home. It does look quite nice. I do like the way the, the earth looks. It looks a little bit sort of pixelated. But you also get a little bit of a quiz uh, where you can kind of choose some answers. You never seem to be able to choose the second answer. So I don't know whether that's bugged or broken. But I can never choose the second answer. Maybe that's always wrong and it's not going to let me choose it. I don't know. But like if I choose that, I still can't choose that one. I still can't choose that one. So it, it, that's a bit bugged. So that needs to be fixed. Um, and Explore is more sort of specific sort of points where it's a bit like the first one to be fair. But you kind of more easily select the different sort of areas for information. So it's £1.50. It's $2.00. Two is it worth it? It's nice, it's fine. The Earth itself looks quite good. The moon's kind of floating around. Planets, you've got a little bit of commentary telling you some good stuff. She's got quite a relaxing voice. It's nice, I think it's worth the money. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. There is that obviously broken thing in the, um, in the uh, quiz section and you can't click on the other planets. Like it looks like you can click on the sun over here, but you can't do anything. So I don't know whether you're meant to, there doesn't seem to be anything here that suggests you can, but the description of it sounds like you can click on other planets, so and there's nothing there. But, I don't know, I kind of like this. I think for kids and for sort of t teaching them about the world and the planet and how it's all made up, absolutely cool. I do like the Star Chart app that you can get on the Oculus Go, so do check that out if you don't already, but this is going to get a thumbs up. I think it's fine. <laughs> Next up, we have Prime Video VR. So this is Amazon Prime Video now in VR. So that makes sense. We have this kind of big sort of cartoony environment, which I don't like, if I'm honest, but whatever. I guess I would have liked something just a bit simpler, a bit more sort of modern looking. This looks a bit kiddish. And I say that with a big kid advert on the front of the page here. But um, for me, I mean, nice to change the environment. You can't. Uh, but it's nice now that we've got Amazon Video available natively on the Oculus Go and the Quest 
uh, just within the headset without sort of hacking around. Don't have to go to the website, don't have to sideload any apps anymore. It's all here. Uh, so, for example, we do have some VR content here. So this is Oculus, uh, this is Oculus. This is 360 VR stuff. Some of it's 3D, some of it's not. It's decent quality. It's definitely worth checking out. You do need an Amazon Prime membership to access uh, this stuff, if you don't, or if you have an Amazon account on its own, you can only access the stuff that you've bought. So the if you go on Amazon Prime, you can buy videos, you can rent things. But if you've got a Prime membership, you get access to lots of free stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. So let's click on this one, shall we? Men in Black 2. Let's click on it just to watch a little bit and kind of show you the environment that you get. So you get this kind of cool cinema environment. You get a nice big screen here. The quality is pretty good. Uh, I would say it looks like a it looks like a 1080p image. I guess it kind of depends on the video itself, the film. But you can change the size of the screen. You can also click to move the screen, so you can grab it and move it up. So if you fancied watching it while you were lying down, you can do that. Works absolutely fine. You can then sort of just reset to put it back where you want to. You do get this cool environment. It doesn't change the the, the sort of environment does dim when the sort of film is playing. But it's not reactive to the light that's on screen. So like you know, like it's white, it's black, it's blue, whatever. The environment isn't lighting, isn't changing. So it's not doesn't feel particularly realistic. But hopefully that will come in time. It's got voice search, which has just jumped up for no reason at all. Let's uh, get back out of that, shall we? Um, there's no social here, so it would be great if you had friends that also had Amazon Prime. You could invite them. You can't, but that would be awesome if you could. Uh, wow, so you can't download programs, so if you wanted to kind of take things with you like you can on tablets, um, you can download things to watch offline, you can't on this version, hopefully that'll come in the future. And at the moment as well, there's no 3D films, which I think is the some of the best stuff about sort of VR, uh, VR headsets, is having the opportunity to do v, uh, 3D films. So there's none of that on here. Maybe as VR takes a bit takes off a bit better, we'll get it. Especially in the UK, we don't have any kind of 3D online rental places or anything, so it'd be nice to have some. Um, but for now, we're kind of stuck with this. But you know, it's nice to have Amazon. So absolutely, gets a thumbs up for this one. It's nice to have it here. There's a bunch of content on here. It's nice to have it natively on the go. <laughs> Next up, for four pounds or five dollars, five euros, we have car parking simulator. So. Let's click start. You do have a few cars that you can unlock. Uh, I don't believe they have anything other than aesthetic changes to them. I mean, I may be wrong. I've not actually unlocked any more, but it doesn't seem to be anything that kind of pops up. But let's choose level one. Um, it's here. Yeah. It feels like this. I've seen this city before. I don't know if this has appeared in a different game. Is this maybe like a, a asset set that other people have used? But you do have sort of rear view mirrors. You do have um, a rear view mirror in the center there. And the car takes forever to start up. And for whatever reason, the steering in this thing is just busted. I struggle sometimes. If you do, if you just pull the trigger, you go forward. Pull trigger and press touchpad, you go backwards. And you're meant to turn by sort of pointing left and right to turn the steering wheel. But it's so temperamental. Look, I'm turning. I'm turning left, look, if I turn, no, if I turn, no, that's going right. If I turn right, no, it's going left. It's turn up, down, turn left. I, d I just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's turning, look, it's turning on its own there. No, I want to turn left. So turning left seems to be an issue. Sometimes it seems to work better than others. Sometimes it doesn't. So at the moment, until that fixes, I can't recommend it. It gets a thumbs down because it's really frustrating. I've only managed to do three levels because I just get stuck in this kind of rut of right turning. I can't I can't do anything other than turn right. Um I don't know whether like look controller that way, controller that way, controller I can't I can't get it to turn turn left. <laughs> Is it me? Is it just me? I don't think it's just me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, if that could be fixed, I think if it was literally just turn like this, I think that would probably just be the easier thing to do. Don't do the pointy thing, because that's just annoying. Or do it like that and turn the steering wheel like that. Or, or maybe, let's see that speed racer game, isn't there? That does this. Yeah, that'd be fine. Just turn the steering wheel. But I seem, yeah, yeah, it's broken. Don't get it. It's not worth it. It looks okay. The car interior is quite nice. The graphics are stylish. 
So that's got it going for it. But at the moment, this is just, yeah, it's unplayable. As I say, I managed to kind of wiggle my way through to level three, but that's it. I'm not touching this anymore. But if you're the developer of this and you fix it, let me know. I'll let everyone else know. But at the moment, bleh. All right, next up is Headjack Inc. Uh, it's a corporate app, I think, well, kind of like a, a service where you can upload your own VR content. Uh, you can get yourself a digit, a, a sort of six digit code here. You put it in and then you can show people. So you can send that code to somebody, however far away, a client or whatever, let them enter the code and they can go like this. So we can load a demo thankfully, without a pin code, just to kind of get a feel for what the app is like. So if you've got a VR project, you want an easy way of being able to share it with clients or people you know, around the world for whatever reason, this could be quite a good platform for it. So if you go online, you can upload your stuff there. You can create thumbnails and try and change the layout and all that sort of stuff. Oh, and when I went into this before, I had like a dummy sort of experience with some videos in it. But this time now, as soon as I've got in and it's saying I need to install the app to get it working from that. So eh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm gonna give it a meh because I think it's a very specialized tool for you know people who need this sort of thing. So I think it's probably one to look into if you are in a position to wanna to share that sort of content, but for 99.9% .9 of people, it's probably not gonna apply. It's just a shame that they don't have the demo here anymore because I'm sure I ran in here before and there were some demo videos and all sorts of things. So they must have changed that the last couple of days since I played it. So that's a shame, but you know, for a meh, but it's probably gonna be, it'd probably be a thumbs up for a lot of people, but for the average Joe, it's one to avoid. <laughs> Next up, we have Empire Soldiers VR. So it's a couple of 360 degree videos controlled with just your sort of head. You can actually use your pointer and click and choose if you want to as well. So it's got a bit of a gear VR hybrid going on here. And you've got commentary, you've got sort of, they're like little mini documentaries. It's absolutely free to download. And it's actually kind of cool. It's worth kind of watching. There's no kind of way of kind of skipping ahead uh, there's no kind of timeline to, to skip. It's all streamed. You don't download it. So the quality is kind of what it is. You can sort of re easily reset your view by just looking and clicking, which is which is kind of nice. Clicking on the touchpad, that is. Uh, so it's kind of cool. We've got to kind of sit through a lot of it to get anywhere, which is a bit of a shame. I would rather kind of skip forward a minute or two so you can kind of see something a little bit different. But the quality's okay. It's about sort of the war, different things that are going on. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. You know, stick it on, it's free. It's actually pretty cool. So as a free app, absolutely gets a thumbs up. Next up, we have Paper Valley. This is pretty much probably this week's must buy app and experience. It's basically a paper aeroplane throwing game. <laughs> so the kind of premise is the world's gone a bit dark. It's a bit gloomy. It's not very nice. You're a paper throwing God. Well, I don't know if you're a God. Um, and you've got to kind of traverse the environment, throw in paper airplanes from point to point to unlock different things. So you can turn yourself around by sort of touching left and right on the D-pad, on the touchpad. You grab a paper plane, you throw it in different directions, like these are the portals. I think there's eight different levels. Uh, I think I've done five or six of them already. Um, maybe four, um, but they're quite good. They're quite relaxing. There's no kind of real peril. There's no way of really losing. It looks quite smart. I do like the style, the visual style. Uh, you basically kind of grab two different types of paper airplane or two main types. The yellow ones, which you kind of throw at these targets here. The purple ones are used for teleportation. So if you see like a little purple wisp, you throw that, but you can grab this plane here and throw it down there and you can steer the planes a little bit. So when you throw them, you kind of wiggle your little kind of controller in the way to kind of guide your little paper airplane in the right direction. So what you got to essentially do is keep hitting these targets, move one to the other. We grab the right plane for the right thing. And there we go. Works really, really well. And I find uh, the purple ones kind of lock on, I think. I don't think I've ever missed a purple one, but the uh, yellow ones I've occasionally missed. Sometimes you do get a special version with like, uh, that goes a bit faster, that goes a different way. You can get some shots where you've got to really sort of loop and bank them around. So look, now we've got to sort of turn ourselves around a little bit, grab a yellow plane, throw it down there, ping. And this is kind of essentially the game. I mean, it doesn't seem that exciting, but I think for the money, 
and it's four quid, five dollars. It's not bad value. For just a nice kind of chilled out experience, you could easily sit down in a sofa or a couch, play this, anybody can play it. The physics seem quite good. Uh, let's not have that plane. We can kind of steer. If you miss and your plane hits a wall, it turns into a little flower. So it's not kind of like a, a waste of a go. Uh, oh, there we go, up there. Uh, it's pretty cool. And I've kind of enjoyed playing the levels that I've played so far in this. So, so look, there's so the targets up there now. We don't want a purple one, we want that one. And think, oh, you do see those ones up there as well. So I don't want a purple one, I want that one. I want, oh, there we go, there we go. Yes, that gives us more planes. Oh, and a red plane. So I think the red one, if I'm correct, does a slightly different thing. So you look, see it's got like a slightly different pattern on it. It does a slightly different thing. So we need a purple one to go over there. And when we get there, I think we get more planes from where we, we landed as well, yep. So there we go, let's go this one. Oh, you see like that, that blue plane shot as fast as it could. I didn't even go like that. But if you do, if you do give it some welly, they do go faster. So you go whoosh. They do definitely go faster. So, if, I mean, there's not much to show in this game. This is essentially what you get, but I like it. It's nice, peaceful for the money. It seems like good value. It looks pretty cool. Uh, and as kind of relaxing go games go, it's unusual. Um, yeah, unoffensive and yeah, quite sort of relaxing kind of push your, push your ease. So yeah, absolutely gets a thumbs up and a big, big recommendation from me. <laughs> For $4, you can get yourself a copy of Blumber. So gaze controlled, we click on play. There's kind of, I mean, static mode kind of keeps you in one place while you're playing. Dynamic mode pans you around it as you go. So let's do dynamic mode, just kind of so you can kind of see what it's like. Um, it's a bit like, well, it's exactly like the stacking game that you get on mobile phones. So you've got these kind of blocks moving back and forward. You press your button to stop that block and then another block goes and you've got to kind of basically kind of keep going, pressing your button, keep going until you get the highest tower you can and until you your block gets ever so small. So every time you miss a bit, you lose that bit. So any overhang disappears. So you've got to kind of keep going. You, as I say, you can choose a mode where you don't rotate around it. I mean, the graphics seem okay. They look okay. They're pretty solid looking, a little bit pixelated in places. Um, music is unoffensive and I've missed. You've got a score of 21, but there's no kind of online leaderboards. There's no multiplayer. It'd be quite good to play against other people maybe. Have a little chat while you're playing. I mean, this is essentially what it is. So for £3 or $4, is this worth it? I think if it was, if it was a couple of quid game, it would be a better recommendation. But I'm not going to give it... I'm not going to give it. I'm not going to give it a thumbs down. I'm going to give it a meh because there's nothing wrong with it. It works fine. I just think there's not much to it. And if it was half the price, I think yeah, absolutely, it'd be worth worth the purchase. But at sort of four, five, four, five dollars, four, four dollars seems a little bit pricey for what content you get in here. If this is your sort of thing. It could be quite relaxing, something to play on a plane. It seems that it's getting further and further around me though. Each time I do this, can I reset the view? Yeah, yeah, you can reset your view, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, so go, it's gonna get in there. <laughs> Next up, we have Special Force VR Invasion. And this menu option is new from when I last played it. I've chosen network, which I assume means online mode, and it doesn't load. So let's choose single, which I imagine is single player, and see if this mode actually loads. Because when this game very first came out, it's been out probably for a couple of weeks now, um, it got you into the game, it started, and then it just crashed and took you back to the main menu of the Oculus Go. So there we go, start game. So yeah, so the first menu, if you choose network, doesn't work. I wonder if that's multiplayer or network. We'll have to see when we get in, because it's obviously had some updates since, because obviously they've had to have an update to fix it because it kept crashing. I'll get kicking you out because I think it was looking for multiplayer and then there wasn't multiplayer. So maybe that's what's happening in that front menu as well. And now it's saying loading system data and stopped. Oh, I can hear some music. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, it looks like multiplayer maybe then is broken or it might be searching for um, a multiplayer game, can't find it, hence why it just doesn't load. It doesn't load until you've got a multiplayer game going. Hmm. Which is a shame because this game is actually eight pounds or ten dollars so it's kind of on the pricey side of go you can choose different sort of weapon starting sets here um although it's not actually letting me change weapons 
I can't click on any of those. Okay. You can usually choose different people as well. No, I can't choose those. We can do a quick AI match. Oh, we can do that. So this plays a bit like, it does look quite cool, but it plays a bit like a kind of, you've got set points that you can walk to, that you can run to, and AI do the same. You move from one point to the other and you're shooting at each other as you go through. You've got two different weapons, two different loadouts, uh, as you saw from the main menu, which for whatever reason I couldn't choose. Maybe I need to unlock them because it seems to have reset my progress since I last played it. And we're in. So there we go. We've got, oh, we're going to get a shot already. So we've got a guy over there. Let's, let's, let's shoot him. We can use the touchpad to move from place to place. So you kind of look at a place and move to it. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. There we go. Let's move, move, move. I'm I feel sort of shots coming from everywhere. What I would say is the AI keeps spawning in the same blooming places. So they uh, end up spawning right in front of you. And then, you know, you try and get past them like this. Look, here he is. Look, he's back here again. Oh, right, now I'm reloading. There we go. All right, let's move over there. And then you can change weapon. Is it, what is it? Swipe left or right. There we go. It's left, left and right. Just change weapon. He's getting blown up to, to smithereens. Swipe down to turn around. Oh, and then, oh, oh, there's a guy over there. There's a guy over there. This would be kind of cool, I think. Um, oh, there we go. Look, we've got the menu. You can see sort of who's playing. Uh, we can turn around. Oh, that's, that's the trouble. I'm dead. But they're all over the place. You can't sort of turn on the spot. Um, the sniper's quite good because when you do snipe in for a shot, it does kind of give it this zoom. It is head controlled. And then you can aim for a shot. Uh, we can move around. Let's move over here. Keep moving, keep moving. Let's see if we can get a sniper shot off here, shall we? It'd be nice if there was a turn on the spot, holding left or right. Oh, I just changed my weapon. Oh, oh, let's get him. Get him. Oh, let's go, let's go. Let's change back my other gun. So the, the premise seems quite good, but I've yet to get a multiplayer game and the multiplayer doesn't seem to ever work. But I don't know if that's just because no one's online. Like if there was other people playing, maybe it would just suddenly work. I don't know, um, but for the money, it's not going to get a bit of a thumbs up. It's an interesting concept. It's going to get a bit of a meh because it's kind of a fun game in a way. The kind of moving around, the way it works is pretty solid, works pretty well. As I say, it'd be nice if it had a kind of a turn on the spot mode uh, so you don't have to kind of keep t turning around uh, in your seat, especially because Go Games are, you know, Go Games, we want to kind of sit still. Uh, the AI kind of just spawns in the same place every blooming time. Um, but I would love to get some multiplayer on this going. So if anybody has bought it already and hasn't refunded it because there's been no multiplayer or it didn't work when they first got it, uh, let me know and maybe we'll set up some games. It'd be good to kind of test it out. But as it stands at the moment, for the money, for the price, it's a bit of a meh because the, the AI is relentless. They just keep spawning in the same sort of place. There's no kind of reward for doing that, um, for kind of playing and continuing. So it's going to get a bit of a meh. Uh, yeah, maybe pick it up if it's in a sale or it gets some more updates. It sounds like they've already put out a few updates already. Maybe it'll get even better over the coming weeks. But for now, it gets a meh. Just keep an eye on it. I'll let you know in the comments down below if uh, there's been any kind of interesting updates to it. Next up, we have Georgia Ski Slopes, which was actually one that I couldn't download for the longest time. Uh, when it first came out, I was trying to download it and it wouldn't download and it was 2.6 gig in size and it is never downloaded. But I just tried it again now for this video and it downloaded, so here it is. So what you essentially get is four different sort of ski resorts and then sort of a uh, oh, cute little kid asleep in a beanbag. Uh, <laughs> and then a little look like a virtual tour, video virtual tour. So you get the sort of uh, starting screen here and then you get some points that you can look around at. So we can click on skiing. Then we can go up here and then load another video where we're racing down a mountain, skiing, which is a bit disorientating. Oh, and it's paused. Is that it? Is that everything? Oh, no. Oh, it starts again just as I clicked the menu. Um, but I guess this is an, an interesting app. It's free. If you're intending to go skiing at these places, then maybe it's worth uh, giving this a download, giving it a watch. I wouldn't say the quality is amazing. The quality is not bad. Um, you can obviously see it's this guy here. It is pausing and stopping. This is probably the first time I've properly used this app, as I say, because it wasn't working to start with. 
Um, we can zip up there, can we? There we go. Uh, so, I mean, it's free. If you, As I say, if you're intending to go ski in this place anyway, why not give it a download? Oh, there's an Insta360 Pro camera. Look, you can see the shadow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, give it a go, download it. It's pausing and stuttering. That could be because I'm recording, but it could just be a broken app. <laughs> a bit broken. But as I say, I couldn't download it when I first tried it, so it's nice that it actually works now. So let me know what you think. Have you been skiing? I've never really been skiing, so I don't know I don't know if I could ski. I don't know if I'm capable of skiing. But uh, let me know what you think. But this gets a bit of a... Um, it's free. I'm going to give it a thumbs up, because I think if you're intending to go skiing then this could be quite a good app for you. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna air on the thumbs up rather than the mess. Next up is the mystery of Rattlesham Mumps, which is free. You get like a, a torch light where your sort of uh, controller is. And it's like an animated narrative artistic story. Um, so the narrator's definitely got a certain type of accent to it. I'm not sure what it is. But he's reading it and you, oh, yeah, you want to kind of watch it and it's got a little bit of 3D depth to these sketches. Um, and then you end up kind of going into different rooms and having to find things and trigger the next part of the, the reading, the poem, the whatever it's doing. So the, you can see the artwork on the walls quite cool. I swear the eyes just moved. Oh yeah, they did. Look, look away and look back, it's moved. So we can go through that door. We can go through to a different room and you see things with um, sort of pink stuff on it that you shine your torch at, and then you get a little bit of a, oh, here's the tankard, and this is what happens. So this is kind of cool, I do like this. Um, it looks quite good, it looks quite sharp, it's definitely got kind of this cool, sound shaded look to it. If you're into kind of this type of thing, you know, something a little bit more, well, a little bit less than a game, more of a kind of just a narrative experience, bit unusual, bit quirky, yeah, it's free. Download it. Give it a go. It's actually kind of fun to, to play through. So I'll play through the whole thing. But yeah, overall, get a thumbs up. <laughs> Next up is Against Gravity, which is a series of... How many have we got? Six, eight spaced-themed VR videos from Veer. So this does load up Veer in the background, technically. Um, so that's where the videos come from. You can download them to your headset to get better quality, or if you want to take them with you, you've got any sort of issues, that sort of thing. There are 3D ones in here as well. It's free to download. They are quite cool videos, and it's nice that for, compared to some of the videos we've watched in, in today, that we can actually skip forward. Oh, this is a bit weird. Ooh, 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 let's move, uh, let's move a little bit further in. Ooh, that, that Earth is a bit close. But yeah, I mean, it's free if you're interested in space, exploring, all that sort of good stuff. They're, they're good quality videos. Some of them are slightly nicer quality than others. I do always kind of prefer 3D over sort of 2D. Um, so I tend to go for those first. But here we go. This is pretty cool sitting inside a, a spaceship. This is actually, oh, this is actually nice quality. Oh, I've not watched this one before. Oh, let's skip ahead. Let's have a little look at it a little bit more. Uh, no, skip ahead. There you go. Uh, ooh, yeah, I like this. Ooh. So I think just for this video alone, that's pretty cool. And I've only just watched a couple of seconds of it. I like the look of it. Although it's glitching a little bit with the lighting down here, but flying around space, you can kind of see reflections on the, the windscreen and stuff like that. It's quite atmospheric. I like this. So yeah, I mean, overall, it's free. Six videos. You can get them on Veer themselves anyway, but it's part of a free app. Why not give it a download and check it out? <laughs> And last but not least, we have Defrost, which is a 12-part virtual series, uh, which is something I've kind of covered before. So I did a live stream with the director of this, and the director did Grease and Flight the Navigator. So I'll leave a link to that video down below if you can watch it. But it was with some other VR directors as well who do VR content. And this is 12-part sort of VR series. Let's kind of... Uh, should we just do the trailer? Here we go. Let's just do the trailer. Kind of watch it. It is a Veer thing, so it's a Veer video on the Veer platform. It is 360 3D. The quality is not as good as I kind of expected to be, like the, the video quality. I know this is the trailer, but even kind of the other videos, it seems pretty low. It, I'm not sure whether they, they, they were meant to be updating it with a higher quality, so maybe it'll still get some updates. This doesn't look too bad. 
Um, but it does depend scene to for scene. It's got some cool special effects. It's got a kind of interesting premise. Uh, it is eight pounds or ten dollars, so it's up to you whether you kind of find that interesting. I think it, each part is about five minutes long. Um, so you're getting yourself, what, 60 minutes, an hour's worth of content. So that's not bad value for that. It's got some famous faces in it as well. So it's a pretty good sort of uh, lineup of actors. Um, premises, interesting. Here you go. We know this guy, don't we? It feels like some sort of, I don't know, you, you, you're this kind of person in a wheelchair who can't move, who's been re reawoken after they had a, a serious illness in the future and something's going on so this is cool that was in 3d everything's in 3d i don't know it is cool it's definitely worth kind of picking up i would like to see this probably at half price to encourage more people to get it so it's going to get a thumbs up because i i do like it i did watch it i did enjoy it i know i have been sponsored by veer in the past and done those other videos uh and you may be a little bit cynical of me liking anything veer but no, I like Defrost. It was good fun to watch through. As I say, I think I would prefer it if it was about half price, a fiver. Uh, that would probably sit a little bit better with me. Probably easier to recommend to everyone. But if you like this kind of VR series, you want something that's got multiple parts to it and a bit of a story, yeah, absolutely. Thumbs up. Go grab it. Check it out. So there we go. There's this week's 14 new releases. Technically, it's a couple of weeks bundled together. But as I say, I'm a little bit behind on my videos due to the school holidays and the uh, boys being off. But uh, let me know what you think about these games, apps and experiences. Which ones are you going to pick up? I think for me, Paper Valley is an absolute purchase. It's a good fun game, good value for money. Um, nice, relaxing, unique game. Uh, throwing paper airplanes around works really well. Uh, really impressive. There's a few other half decent ones in there, but as I say, let me know in the comments down below which ones are your standout ones. What have you tried? Any of the ones I've had issues with, did you find they're okay for you? Let me know. Uh, as I say, I've had a few this week where I couldn't download them initially. I don't know whether that was me or whatever, but we've had updates since to the headsets and all sorts. Maybe that's fixed it. I don't know. But it's good that they're all working. But let me know your thoughts. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. That's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it. But do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it. And I'll try and do better for next time. Become one of the Remarkables. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified when I next upload a video. And that's me done. I'm out. Virtual high five. Oh.